Okay, hello everyone. My name is Peter Bjorklund. I'm a solution architect at Software AG. Today I'm going to take you on a modeling exercise. We're going to see some different modeling techniques for modeling a business and analyzing a business to find the right path in your digital transform, uh, transformation. Right, so I work as a solution architect at Software AG. Um, been doing that for nine years. I'm based in Stockholm, and the software I'm gonna talk about today is called Aris. But but before we, we, we start with, with, with the software, let me just take you through some concepts here, right? And, and why I'm doing this. What are the key things in modeling a digital business? Well, that's what I'm gonna talk with, talk with you about in the next uh, 20, 30 minutes or so. And in order to explain that, let's just first try to understand what the digitalization mean, right? So it could mean any of these things, uh, right? 24-7 uh, support, maybe that's uh, enabled through a chatbot. Personalized and contextualized offerings, because we have access to customer data, seamless experience or connected devices, right? So we have a lot of different examples on how digital technology can change ways of working and, and delivering new types of, of services and, and, and products. Either way, these are all examples where APIs play a big role. Um, for, for the chatbot to get the right data, of course, we need an API for seamless experience throughout a purchase process. APIs, connected devices or payment methods, right? Probably you will use APIs for those new improved capabilities of your organization, right? So that's all fun to talk about. Uh, real exciting stuff, I would say. But it doesn't really mean that this journey comes without challenges. And in my opinion, I would say that there's a still big gap between those that formulate strategies and those that build the solutions or develop the software, right? And I can for sure refer to the, this quite old picture. Um, I think many of you have seen it. I think it's relevant still today. But what I want to propose today is, or stress that we need a way to collaborate. And the way to do that is through modeling. We need to be able to visualize for all the stakeholders, what are the dependencies, what are the contexts, what are the flow of things, the impacts if you change something, right? And if you can do that, it's much more powerful than just talking out freely, hoping that the receiver of that information you know, understand what you're talking about. So what I like to also say is that modeling is not drawing. Um, so in terms of communicating a clear message or when you try to create a common understanding of something, the message cannot be ambiguous. Right, so be careful. When we talk modeling, it's not about drawing a painting like the Mona Lisa, because this drawing, it has an endless amount of messages. I can, I've read, yeah, you can read about it. Of course, there are many viewpoints on this painting as there are spectators. So while I might love art or love music because the many ways that you can interpret the meaning, I would like to argue that modeling does not equal drawing, right? Because while a picture can say more than a thousand word, this cannot be the situation in, in, in a business situation. So this is where modeling comes in. And modeling is about having this common language, which is clear to everyone. And when we have that, this is when we can start collaborating um, and not having our, our own input interpretation of, of, of what is what. So 
the case we're going to look at today is a company. Let's call them Coach and Bus Rides Incorporated, right? So we will get acquainted with this company that they are quite optimistic about their business model. They have seen the revenue drop in the, in the last couple of years, right? But they are quite positive that it might be a very old business model selling these services, taking travelers from A to B by bus or by coach. They, they are very optimistic about the future. But, you know, the, the, the struggle that they have is that um, they have seen revenue drop and, and, and the typical customer segments are starting to, uh, started to, to decrease. So what do they need to do? Well, they need to go and evaluate their business model. So therefore, they go into ARIS, which is that modeling tool, which can be used to assess and map out your, 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 your business. And of course, the process map is a, is a great start to understand what are the different core processes of our business. But at this point, what they really want to do is to go and look at the business model. What's the business model of our company? Just to, explain, just to explain a few things. This model type, as you see here, it's not something that we have come up with, Software AG. This is based on a de facto standard when it comes to these type of discussions. So it's a model type developed by a guy called Alexander Osterwalder. And he suggests that when the management team meets up to discuss these things, it's imperative that they all have the same definition of what is a business model. Right? So hence, he, he developed this approach here to you know, really depict what is what and what are we talking about here. So for the first thing, he said that in the middle, it's important to really define the value proposition. And we are not saying you know, we, we sell bus rides. We are selling the experience from taking you from A to B by coach. On the far right here, right, we explain what are the different customer segments? And at this point, they have the, the boomer generation being the main customer for several years. But for obvious reasons, they need to find new segments as well. So, of course, it's Generation X. Those are people my age. Um, they were hoping that that would be a bigger customer base. But, but people in, in, in the 40s, late 30s, um, you know, they are more keen on traveling by air. They are not very good for the environment, rest assured. Um, but what they really want here is to reach that wider customer segment. And when they look at this business model, right? So that's the customer segment. We have the type of relationships we have with them. We have the channel, which is today only this website. We can also see that the key processes that we need to have, have, have in place to deliver the service. We can see the different partners, cost structures, and revenue streams. So these are all things you know, explained within this business model. But then one person says, we need a mobile app because the generation Y, which we want to get to, they are not used to going to the website. They are using their mobile phones and the mobile app. So we need to develop an API to enable this app. Okay, someone says, well, let's see what we can do then. But first of all, let us look at the customer journey for this. So that would be another model type, right? So we have evaluated and assessed our current business model, but now what I want to do I will go to one of my favorite models called Book Ticket, the customer journey map for booking a ticket. And I go to the Assist one. So when modeling a customer journey, we are really taking the perspective of a customer, uh, seeing here what are the different steps they are taking when either buying our services or products or selecting our products or having problems with our products or using them. 
No, we, we, we try to imagine ourselves being in their shoes. And what we see here is that when they are to book a ticket, they go to the website, quite obvious, right? They select the destination they want to go to and the departure. They insert travel information, select payment options, and confirm the selection. So those are quite obvious steps taken by the customers when booking a ticket. But when doing these mappings, we also need to understand what are the touch points that we had during these steps? And this is really where, 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 where the interesting thing starts, right? So the, the touch point here is a website visit. And we can define those, those touch points in every one of these steps, right? So we're looking at ourselves, but how do we interact with them? And of course, we can also define the different channels for us. And all through the, the, the journey here, it, it's on the website. But more importantly, in these touch points, how do they feel? What are the emotions that they are going through when traveling through this journey? And of course, the, how, how can we know, right? So we need to ask and interview our customers. Maybe we can find data somewhere about these, these things. Or you know, you know, just to try to develop these personas which we use in order to really understand what are the emotions when they're taking these different steps. And what we see here in the first step, right? I didn't really know that the website existed. That's one of the, the, the emotions, right? So they are used to other sites. They are used to Momondo or booking.com that I needed a separate website to book a bus ticket. I didn't know that. But either way, once they have found that, they also feel like, look, this coach ride will take me to this city, but it will not take me to my friend, which I'm going to meet. So I also have the need to book local train rides or um, maybe even taxi or maybe even rent a bike. Right? It doesn't take me from A to B, really. It takes me from city to city. The rest of the steps, they are quite nice because we have a lot of journeys to select from. So that's a positive experience. And when they come to the payment selections, they like the price because it's a low cost alternative. It's very affordable you know, compared to flying uh, or, or high speed trains. This is really affordable. But in the last step, they, they sense that no, I like the price, but I still need to book all the other things. So it's not really end to end here. And then the question comes up, would the mobile app really help here? Right? Maybe not here, but maybe it could actually help us providing services during the ride. But nonetheless, Let's go and try to find out how can we develop this API so that we can build this app. So I, I go to the source system that we're using, which is the website, which is using the Ticketmaster system and this other pro bill system. But I know that for the Ticketmaster system, this is where we want to develop this API, right? So I go into edit mode in Ares. I go and edit the model. And now Air is going to open up this modeling framework. Uh, so whether it's a customer journey map or business model canvas uh, by Alex Alexander Osterwaller, this is the model type for designing or doing the first ideation of what this API could be about. And I can see here that Ticketmaster is the, the, the system which we want to use to develop this API from. And then I say that, OK, this API, we're going to call it the Ticketmaster API. That will be the name of the API. And we will also say here that, OK, what data do we need to create, read, update, or delete? Right. So I do know that every time they do this, we need to create an account. Hence, we need to create customer data. So everyone needs an account right, for, for, for booking these tickets. What else? Um, maybe order data because they will order tickets, right? So order data is something that, 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 that we're going to use. Um, what else? Data about, of course, destinations or the trip. 
those are things that we need as well. And this is all information that resides within Ticketmaster. Right, so this is a very good starting point. This is the type of data that we need. But what will be the characteristics of this API? So we start talking about the capabilities, right? We need to be able to create a customer, okay? We'll probably need to be able to schedule a trip, right? Probably reschedule trip, et cetera, et cetera. So we, we design here together with all the different types of state, stakeholders, what should be the characteristics of this API? What is the data? And you know what? I also want to put in here who should own this one, right? And I think that the business unit, marketing and sales, those should be the ones owning this API. Just so, just so that we have the ownership topic explained. So once we do this, of course, there are many ideas coming up, right? Um, and then one person says, what if we could make this API available to our partners or other booking sites? We just say here, okay, one big requirement here, it must be public, right? We want this to be not only for ourselves and our mobile app, but also other sites. What if this could become reality? And then let's look at the customer journey. So I'll just save this one, I'll close it, and I go back to the home page. I'll go to my favorites here, and I'll revisit the, the assets journey, and I can just see here, okay, there were some, some um, emotions here, not very good. So in the website visit, you know, and then the code right selected, not very good emotions. But if I look at the to be customer journey, so this means that I can go to the app, I can go to a partner web, I can go to our web. It doesn't really matter because I have all the information in all these places. And the, the touch point here is no longer the, the, the website, right? It's any of these websites or the, the mobile app. It all has the same information. And the emotions, just considering our personas, they can now have one place for all types of transportations. So all of a sudden, the emotions here go up. In the middle here, the steps here, right? It's gonna be fun, right? Doesn't really change. They like the price. We haven't changed the price at all. We just expose ourselves to, to the wider audience. Um, and here as well, at the end, they have booked everything end to end, whether that's the, 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 the bus ride, the train ride, renting a bike, booking a taxi. They can just say, Look, I have booked everything now. I know exactly what it costed me, and I can't wait to go on a new adventure. And I can even put some data on this, right? So on this customer journey, we can now see that we have 60% positive customer touch points as opposed to what we used to have, which was only 40%. And what, what, what we could see before this change is that this website visit, it got a very bad scoring here. So the customer feeling was, was very low while this touch point was very important. So we don't want to see this gap, but if we go to the to be one, we can definitely see that all of a sudden it gets a very high rating. So the website visit has a positive feeling while still being very important. And these are the type of things we really want to find when doing customer experience management. The important touch points, those are the ones that we want to improve. I can also go to my new redefined business model. So the new business model for our national coach travel. So I go here and I can see that the value proposition is still the same, right? But what we have added here is, you know, we had the website before, but now we have the booking app and also the partner website. And all of a sudden, 
we can see that you know we are reaching a new type of audience or a new type of customer segment because those people that used to go on to booking.com momondo.com we are now exposed to them as well and especially this new generation generation y which we also know are keen train travelers so if we could partner up with that train ticket booking site and of course we have a great um, 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 great future together. Um, and um, this is now, from a management perspective, our new and redefined business model. Uh, and what I can do from here is, of course, analyze this from different points of views, and more importantly, go into my, my portal here and look at from a overview, not only focusing on, on that specific customer journey, but overall, how do our customers feel when they are interacting with us? So I would like to conclude here. Um, the store here was about building an API, but, but really trying to involve the many different stakeholders that need to be involved. And I, I think that modeling is fantastic because it allows just that. Whether it is about developing an API or building an integration or creating a new service, you really need to be business driven. You need to align across the organization, you know, and modeling is a way to close that gap between those that formulate the strategies and those that build them. And when these models are created, of course, we create transparency and a common understanding of our corporate reality. And in this example, this transparency show that APIs, or it showed how the API could be used in the best way. Of course, someone thought that, look, we need an app. But actually, when we started to doing these things, the, the, the truth became clear that what if we could make this public and start collaborating with partner websites? No, that was the finding. And it was all due to having these things very transparent and, and facilitating the, this dialogue across the different stakeholders. And I also think that when we augment these models with the data, it becomes a really powerful tool for continuous improvement.